Cross country is an equestrian sport that sees rider and horse tackling a long course or pattern with jumps and other obstacles along the way. The course is designed to simulate riding at speed across the countryside. Cross country is a test of speed, endurance, and the jumping ability of the horse. It is also a test of the horse's obedience to the rider and the conditioning of the horse. An expert cross country rider will need to demonstrate their knowledge of pace and the ability to ride technically for extended distances. As the rider and horse compete at higher levels, the courses will become more difficult with higher, trickier fences and longer distances. The cross-country event is the ultimate equestrian challenge, relying on horse endurance and speed. It requires horse and rider to trot, gallop, and jump a variety of obstacles on a steeplechase type course in a timed event. The cross-country is itself divided into sections. The beginning is known as Phase A, Roads and Tracks, which functions as a warm-up for horse and rider. Phase B is the Steeplechase. Phase C is a return to roads and tracks, and before Phase D, which is the cross-country phase, There's a mandatory checkup called the vet box, during which the horse's pulse, respiration, and temperature are checked by veterinarians and any horse deemed unfit to continue is withdrawn from the competition at that time. The discipline of cross-country riding is run on the second day of a three-day competition. On the first day, the horse and rider compete in dressage. On the second day, the horse and rider will compete in cross country. And on the third day, the show jumping or stadium jumping phase completes the three day event. Cross country can be physically and emotionally demanding on horse and rider. And it's also one of the most exciting activities that you and your horse can perform together. In cross country, men and women compete equally. Skilled equestrian riders have to not only ride superbly, but they also need to understand how to pace their horses in the slower portions of the competition so that they have enough energy for the demands of the steeplechase and the cross-country portions. In the roads and tracks, phase A, the horse trots and relaxes before beginning the more difficult phases. After the steeplechase phase, horse and rider return to the roads and track to cool down. They may trot, walk, or canter in this phase, and after the vet box, the horse and rider proceeds to the cross country phase. This course may have 24 to 36 obstacles and is usually between three and four miles long for the advanced course and 12 to 24 obstacles on a one to one and three quarter mile course for the beginners. A cross country course is galloped and the goal is for the horse and rider to work together and get through the course safely in a timely fashion and with as few penalties as possible. The reason for the emphasis on safety is because the sport can be extremely dangerous for both horse and rider. Each course has an optimum time and time limit. An optimum time is the ideal length of time it takes to safely complete the course. 
a time limit is double the optimum time and any time over this is deemed an unacceptable amount of time taken to complete the course. The course designer measures and calculates the perfect time needed to complete the course safely. For example, if the course designer decides it should take 10 minutes to complete the course, the optimum time would be 10 minutes and the time limit would be 20 minutes. If a horse and rider tank longer than 20 minutes, even just by one second to complete, the horse and rider are eliminated. Penalties are given for every second over the optimum time and for every second over 15 seconds under the optimum time. An optimum time is needed to keep the discipline at a safe speed for horse and rider. The time taken to complete the course is important because the results are awarded on the fastest time with the fewest penalties. Each competitor is timed from the moment they cross the starting line to when they reach the finish line. The optimum time is calculated by the course designer who divides the length of the course by the pace required. A beginner or novice speed for their horse would be between 11 and 13 miles per hour while an advanced horse would travel an average of 21 miles per hour while on the course. Now jumping faults can also be added and are computed into penalty points. These points will be added to the rider score. If the horse stops in front of the obstacle or goes around the obstacle, they will automatically receive a 20 point penalty. The second time a horse stops or goes around the obstacle, they will receive a 40 point penalty. And the third time the horse stops, they are eliminated from the class. Not only can you be eliminated from the class by going around the obstacle or stopping three times, you can also be eliminated as for falling off your horse, if your horse falls while on course, if the jumps are taken in the wrong order, if the horse doesn't jump all of the jumps, jumps an obstacle twice, or jumps an obstacle going in the wrong direction. The winning horse and rider is the non-eliminated team with the fewest penalty points and the fastest time. It is also important to remember that most cross-country competitions take place in combination with dressage and show jumping as part of an overall event called eventing. The penalty points from this phase are combined with the ones picked up in the other phases to see where you'll place in the entire competition. Did you know? Eventing includes dressage, show jumping, and the horse version of cross country because this combined training was based on the old military test of the cavalry where the rider's life depended on the horse listening to what the rider told it to do. The cross country part makes the sport different from the other equestrian sports because it requires the horse to canter at a high speed over solid and interesting jumps. The cross country course is very long and at the Olympics, it may take as long as 10 minutes for a rider and horse to complete the course. Because cross-country courses are longer in length and have more obstacles than show jumping courses, more than one rider may be completing the course simultaneously, meaning at the same time, in order for all riders participating 
to be able to finish during the day. Often riders will start in a staggered fashion, sometimes in pairs, so it may be the case that several riders are moving through the same part of the course at the same time. Every obstacle in the course is numbered to show its position in the predetermined jumping order as well as having a red flag on the right side of the jump and a white flag on the left side of the jump. These flags indicate what direction it needs to be jumped. A black stripe on the red flag indicates that that particular obstacle is optional, so another route can be taken without the rider being penalized. Each cross-country course is created by a course designer. The course designer specializes in making the route a suitable test for those that are taking part. For example, courses that are designed for beginner riders and beginner horses may use natural terrain, such as level or flat land, to prepare and encourage the horse and rider on their way to the jump. Advanced courses may see a jump positioned on a slope or in the water to make it more challenging. Designers will always try to create a test that is fair and showcases the rider and horse at the correct level. So a beginner horse will not be on an advanced course and an advanced rider will not be on a beginner course. Now the cross country courses are always going to be located outdoors and are designed through fields and wooded areas to accurately represent the terrain of riding in the countryside. In most cases, the course will incorporate the natural features of the area to reflect the fact that this is the type of countryside found in that particular region. The course designer will also use some of these natural features, such as logs, trees, and water in their designing process. They will also use plants and different types of foliage to make it look as if the jumps have been there the whole time and aren't just placed for the course. Each course has a starting box, which is a small area where the horse and rider wait for the signal to start their ride. Everyone starts in the starting box to make the event equal and fair with all the riders. Typically, the first fence in the course will be unchallenging, allowing the horse to find a consistent rhythm and confidence before moving into more technical or harder obstacles. The difficulty tends to decrease towards the end of the course again so that the horse can gain speed and finish well. Having the course designed this way also helps the rider to communicate with their horse and keep control during the event. <laughs>